Ina Mae Dooley was born April 3, 1872 in Hoopiston, Vermilion County, Illinois. Both her parents were originally from Fleming County, Kentucky and only settled in Illinois shortly after William was released from service in the Civil War. William W. Dooley's military career lasted from 1861 until 1863 when his war wounds prevented him from continuing to serve his country. He suffered a musket ball in his knee which was never removed. It was while he was recuperating that he met, courted, and won the hand of Letitia Wilson. After they were married, William found work first as a horse dealer, but eventually took up farming on a plot outside of Hoopiston. Their children were Ina Mae Dooley, George Wilson Dooley, and John Stanley Dooley. The family moved to the Dakota Territory to a 160-acre homestead claim in 1883 when Ina was 11 years old. There, Ina attended the coldest schools, which was a sod shanty about four miles from their homestead in Hand County. Their stay in Dakota was short-lived, a devastating blizzard in 1886 resulting in scores of lives lost forced the decision that the family return to Illinois. When Ina was about 16, she entered Greer College and later studied at the Ladies' Seminary at Hoopston, completing her formal education. She was a talented young lady, and those who knew her felt she had a chance for a musical future. Ina taught school in Illinois from 1892 until 1900, where she met her future husband, James Weston Ogden. James and Ina were married on September 2, 1896, in Hoopiston, Vermilion County, Illinois. At that time, he was employed as a railway postal clerk and traveled back and forth on the Wabash Railroad Line between Toledo, Ohio, and St. Louis, Missouri. Their only offspring, William, was born in Hoopiston on July 22, 1901. After that, the family decided to relocate to Toledo. There, William, who was academically gifted, eventually became an editor on the Toledo Times newspaper. Both Ina and James would become successful Sunday school teachers for the next 25 years at the Northwest Church of Christ. Ina enjoyed the opportunity of using her original verses with the young students. Ina was also keeping house and writing almost daily. Very early in her teaching career, Ina Dooley had strong evangelistic leanings and hoped to become a preacher on the Chautauqua circuit, but marriage and family would come first. Chautauqua was a social and cultural phenomenon which began in 1874 and expanded and permeated rural America until the mid-1920s. Going to Chautauqua meant music, laughter, relaxation, and stimulation for millions of rural Americans. When Chautauqua came to town, there was entertainment for the whole family and the entire community. About 1912, when her father suffered a paralytic stroke, any plans Ina might have been contemplating were canceled. She decided to remain at home to care for her father. The song, Bright in the Corner Where You Are, is said to have been written to cheer him while she sat in the upper corner bedroom of her rustic home on Summerfield Road in Lambertville, Michigan. Charles Gabriel grew up on an Iowa farm. Gabriel taught himself to play the family's reed organ. He began teaching and singing schools by the age of 16 and became well known as a teacher and composer. He served as music director at the Grace Methodist Church in San Francisco, California, and then he moved to Chicago, Illinois. In 1912, he began working with Homer Roadheaver's publishing company. Charles Gabriel wrote the music to brighten the corner where you are. The year is 1913. Homer Roadheaver makes his way to the platform in the Tabernacle at Columbus, Ohio. The crowd of 5,000 anticipates the excitement yet to come. Homer has chosen a new song, written because of a car accident. 
Homer stands in the Billy Sunday Tabernacle at Ohio with trombone in hand. At the first notes, the dust rises from the sawdust floor as thousands jump to their feet. Then the air fills with the music and the words of Ina Ogden's poem written that fateful summer of 1912. Homer Roadheaver's recording of Bright in the Corner Where You Are made the top of the charts in 1915. Billy and Homer gave the song to over 100 million in the 200 tabernacles they built. Thanks to them, over 25 million copies of her song have been printed today. Billy Sunday was an American athlete and religious figure who, after being a popular outfielder in baseball's National League during the 1880s, became the most celebrated and influential American evangelist during the first two decades of the 20th century. Sunday held heavily reported campaigns in America's largest cities, made a great deal of money, and was welcomed into the homes of the wealthy and influential. Perhaps more than a million people came forward at his invitations, and he may have personally preached the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people than any other person in history up to that time. Right in the corner where you are dominated Sunday's revivals, and Sunday gained the devotion of millions. During Prohibition, he also became the subject of derision. One of his revival songs, Right in the Corner Where You Are, became a drinking song in the blind pigs that prospered during Prohibition. One line, somewhere far from harbor, you may guide across the bar, called the waiter for another stein of beer. He piled image on top of image and became the nation's most famous evangelist. Gypsy Smith traveled extensively around the world on evangelistic crusades, drawing crowds numbering the hundreds of thousands throughout his life. Busy as he was, he never grew tired of visiting gypsy encampments whenever he could on both sides of the Atlantic. The year is 1909. Gypsy Smith leads a force of over 2,000 people into the levee, Chicago's segregated vice district, against the advice of police, politicians, and other men of the cloth. They march, sing, and pray to over 30,000 onlookers. The Tribune describes the scene. No stranger crowd ever assembled in Chicago than that which packed the South Side levee last night, quietly, orderly, singing plaintively, with and without the music of the Salvation Army bands. Two or three thousand people in deadly earnest walked through the streets of shame, lined by the darkened windows and closed doors of the brothels and the mansions of prostitution. Men and women were on top of buildings and wagons and automobiles leaning from windows and occupying every possible position of vantage. Ina Dooley Ogden's song was written in 1912 and would compete against the ragtime music of the day. Thank you.